Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And also check out our Patreon page. I'll put a link below. On Patreon, you're gonna get the ability to get exclusive content, reviews that haven't been released yet, and also a discount code for 15% off of everything in our online web store. Hi, I'm Mike, owner of the InGroove in Phoenix, Arizona. Today I'm gonna to do a new arrival video. This is for July 10th, 2020. Don't forget guys, all of this stuff can be purchased online at our website at theingroove.com. First, I wanna go over a few pre-orders. So there's four new Tone Poets that are coming out August 28th. Those are on the website now for pre-order. Uh, Bobby Hutcherson, Joe Henderson, Stanley Turrentine, and a Jackie McLean. Uh, actually, that Jackie McLean is one of my favorite Blue Note. The cover, the art, is one of my favorite uh, LPs. Really cool artwork. A lot of the Blue Notes had really cool artwork, but that's one of my favorite out of all the, all the Blue Note stuff. But uh, great record as well. But those pre-orders are up. Also, Prince is reissuing Sign of the Times. There is a standard version that comes on peach vinyl. That peach vinyl is supposedly only going to be for the very first run of the record, so that is available. There's a four-disc deluxe set, and then there's some 13-disc mega set. The thing about the mega set, and I think I'm going to end up getting stuck buying it. Normally, I don't buy giant box sets like that, but there it was actually a collaboration with him and Miles Davis. Miles Davis did a concert at Paisley Park and did some guest performing on it. I think there's a DVD in that box set that I'm going to want. So I probably will end up getting that jumbo size box set as well. All right, the new train record from Mobile Fidelity has finally arrived. The pre-orders have all been shipped or almost finished shipping. This they did 3,000 copies. It's a single disc, 33 RPM. Uh, I'm going to assume that this is going to be out of print very, very soon, and you will not see it again for less than, you know, $100 or more. Never before released on vinyl. This was the first vinyl release of that album. Also new this week from Mobile Fidelity, Bob Dylan's Pat Garrett. This is another title that was only to 3,000. They're doing 3,000 of these, and that's it. Again, that's something that Mobile Fidelity has been doing recently. I think that's probably to secure licensing. You know, they promise to do X amount this way. You know, Columbia can do however many they want, like on a more wide, wide scale release. So they're doing a lot of these 3,000, 2,500, you know, 4,000 in that range, limited runs. Whereas in the past, they had a time frame. So, you know, they would release as much as they could for, say, three or four years. That's how their license was set up. And now you're seeing a lot of numbered limited editions. So yeah, 3,000 on the train, 3,000 on the Bob Dylan. One of my absolute favorite top best sounding albums. I did this on the video of the best analog records in print. Dire Straits Love Over Gold from Mobile Fidelity. There is no other pressing that you're gonna hear that will come even close to this. I got very, very few of these. They just got their restock in from RTI, Mobile Fidelity did, and my order got cut pretty heavily, and they're already sold out, waiting a repress again. So if you don't have it, I've got a few of these in stock. Another restock from my 10 best R&B and blues albums, Slim Harpo, again, musically fantastic, and great sounding you don't typically hear good sounding blues records you know they were pretty much a product of their environment they were recorded and pressed on you know generally pressed on really crummy vinyl so you don't see a lot of decent you know i've got all the slim harpo originals and man that, those excello records are just noisy and you know, good sounding, but just noisy and really distracting and next to impossible to find clean copies. Great album. I've gotten a lot of slack on this. I included this Alanis Morissette as an add-on to the best analog records in print. If you go to the website, I'm doing a list, and I'm going to start adding some every single week. And the reason I haven't done it yet is because so much stuff is from these audiophile labels and just regular labels in general. Everybody's waiting on represses because I'm guessing the last two or three months most pressing plants have either been closed or heavily cut as far as capacity of what they're able to pump out. So we're waiting on a lot of stuff. So I haven't been recommending stuff because 
you can't get it. I don't want to recommend a record and be like, well, you can't get it. You have to pay a, an enormous amount of money on the secondary market. It's better just to wait. But there's stuff coming in. But this record I got a lot of slack on because parts of it were digital. Parts of it were analog. It was put onto an analog tape. This record was sourced from that original analog tape. You know, I'm not going to get into the weeds on the recording aspect of a record. You know, there's going to be records, especially if it's done in the last 30 or 40 years, where there were digital instruments or digital drum loops, or, you know, there's digital aspects to a lot of records, even if there is an analog tape and the tape, you know, the master tape is analog. A lot of stuff was recorded digitally. If you want to get past stuff that was done digitally and be completely, completely analog, even the instruments on the album being analog, you're going to have to go back to jazz and classical. I mean, that's, you know, when you got to the 70s and you started getting sampled keyboards and, you know, digital started making its way into the mainstream, even, again, analog records, records that are cut analog, there's digital aspects to the record. And the same thing with this. But I wanted to include some stuff from the 90s on that list. This is an exceptionally good-sounding record that... Again, the final tape is analog, but there is some digitization as far as instruments. Some tracks, the drums were recorded digitally. Some tracks, they were recorded analog. It's just the nature of this particular album. But I'm going to keep it on that list anyways because it's deserving of it. Some new arrivals for this week. Selena Ones. Now, we are in Arizona. I ordered a ridiculous amount of these because Selena sells really well with the Hispanic population in Phoenix. But this order was drastically cut, so I only got a few copies of this. This is a double picture disc, I believe. This is good. This is a series that Music on Vinyl is doing for Neo Morricone. A Neo next to John Williams is probably the greatest film you know, he's done the greatest scores in film history, in my opinion. The second next again, John Williams. Uh, I just got done watching The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly maybe three or four days ago. And, you know, you take that soundtrack off the movie, and that movie is just an average movie. That soundtrack in combination with that movie makes it one of the greatest films of all time. But this is based on all of his horror show themes. So they're doing kind of a Western theme, a horror theme, and there, I think there's four total. I don't remember what the other two are going to be. But this is Psycho. This is kind of the horror theme. So you're going to, it's kind of a greatest hits from his horror soundtracks. These are numbered, by the way, to 3,000 on translucent red vinyl. So you've got tracks from the Infernal Trio, Cop Giller, The Night from Moscow, A Quiet Place in the Country, a fantastic composer, and, you know, you should have some Neo in your collection if you don't. Okay, so I've got some restocks of the BBC broadcast, 1969. Maybe I'll get... There was three of them. There was a 67, 68, and 69. I've got some 69, 1969, but I don't have the other two. They may or may not come. Matthew Sw Let's see, 100% fun. This was done by Intervention Records. So this is 100% analog, mastered by Ryan Smith. Great audiophile label. They don't have much in the way of, uh, maybe they've pressed 20 or 30 records intervention, but a lot of their stuff is really, really good. But yeah, this is a double disc, 100% fun by intervention. This is a good one. <laughs> you might laugh. Klaus Nomi. It says it was mastered from the original analog tapes. This is an album that's been on my want list forever. It's cheap. They're non-existent in the United States. Uh, you know, if you're a big David Bowie fan, you probably are familiar with Klaus. David Bowie was a huge fan of his. There's a killer video of him on SNL with Klaus doing backup vocals. 
and David Bowie and that kind of copied some of his style dressed as a Russian nesting doll, if I remember correctly. But, so, you know, I listened to it. This actually was really, really good. But, you know, this is this is cabaret pop, I guess you would call it. Cabaret wave. It's really good. I like it. I play it in the store all the time. A lot of people are confused. They really don't quite know what's going on. It's not everybody's cup of tea, but I'm a big fan. And again, an album that's super hard to find digital. I don't know if I've ever seen one of these CDs come through the store in the last six years, but don't, uh, other than that, I don't even have an original that in my collection. It's only like a $20 record. It's just, they're typically always on Discogs or in VG shape or worse. And then, you know, you eight, ten, twelve dollars $12 for the record and $25 to ship it. I got a few more of the Nora Jones Indie Exclusive. This was on uh, black and white vinyl. So a few more of those before it goes to the black vinyl version only. Danzig Sings Elvis. Now, I know this is a record that came out months and months and months ago, and I ordered this record months ago. I finally got it today. So, yeah, some of you might have got it already, but finally it has arrived. Core Rosic. Yeah. The Who? Not The Who, but The Who. Yeah. The Who. Hate you. Merciful Fate. This is on clear and blue smoke vinyl. Ario Speedwagon's Greatest Hits. Ted Nugent's Cat Scratch Fever. This is a music on vinyl limited to a thousand on transparent blue vinyl. Adam Lambert, new album. Don't know how that is. Not my cup of tea. The Monkeys Live, the Mike and Mickey Show. Their first official live album. I saw the Monkees in 1999. I uh, was dating a girl who won tickets on the radio. And they were the worst seats you could... I mean, it wasn't that large of a venue. And these were the seats that were against the back wall. They were pretty awful. So, also, this is a record that's been out forever. But my distributor had this. And I was confused at first. I'm like, what is... You know, their description of it was a Japanese-pressed MoFi one-step. And I'm like, well, that's not really possible because, you know, Mobile Fidelity makes them all at RTI. There was only 7,500. I'd never heard anything about a special Japanese pressing. But essentially what this is is uh, it looks like maybe through a contract or through a deal, Columbia or Sony imported some into Japan from Mobile Fidelity. They made a custom Obi. There is a Japanese insert. There is, you know, kind of like the full presentation of what you would expect on a Japanese record, 16,000 yen. But yeah, I'm like, you know, at first I was like, God, that, you know, they're twice the price of what I would normally pay for one of these. And they retail for over t twice the price of what it was when it was new. But at this point, it's becoming a $250, a $300 record as it is. So, And I'm out of it. So I said, let's grab a few of them and bring them in the store. You know, if every single one of the one steps are minimum... 125 which is what the retail was there's a couple titles that haven't appreciated much but you know santana's abraxas they did that's 12 1300 the bill evans title they did the first one's 500 the donald fagan's going for 400 I, I mean these things all shoot up exponentially in value but yeah that's a japanese version of a mobile fidelity one step again didn't even know that existed Another record that was on my top 10 R&B and blues 
analog records that are in print that you have to own. Al Green's Call Me. Absolute fantastic records. Absolutely fantastic record. Really good. The rest of this stuff is actually all Speaker's Corner. Bill Weathers, Speaker's Corner. Just as I am. Again, these are just restocks, guys. I don't think there's anything new. Some Mingus. Phineas Newborn. Dr. John. This is actually really good. I listened to this the other day. Dave Brubeck at Carnegie Hall. David Lindley. Some Alan Parsons. This is actually a pretty cool record. I play this in a store a lot, and it actually sells pretty well when I do. This is Gil Evans playing the music of Jimi Hendrix. Gil Evans, famous composer, fantastic orchestrations. Really cool record. Recommended. Some speakers. Corner Herbie Hancock. Aretha. This is a newer speakers corner release. The Doobie Brothers. Little Feet. Newer one again. The Doobie Brothers. Stitt plays Bird. Max Roach Trio. Actually, this is a really good record as well. Uh, musically, I, the clown is fantastic. There's some spoken word stuff on it that I'm not a huge fan of, but really good. Charles Lloyd, really good record, live at Monterey. Herbie Mann at the Village Gate. Mingus Tijuana Moods. Les McCann. Eddie Harris, Swiss Movement, fantastic track on this. This has compared to what? Every time I hear it, I think of my favorite movie, Casino. And compared to what was prominently used by Scorsese in that soundtrack. Nina Simone sings the blues. Herbie Hancock, Manchild. Chet is back, another really, really good Speaker's Corner title. Janis Joplin, I got them old Cosmic Blues. Brazilian Bird, Charlie Bird. Seductive Reasoning. Maggie, and then I cut the rest off at the price tag. Blue Oyster Colt, Secret Treaties. Santana, Oregon, Joe Beam, this is a really good title as well. Al DeMoya. And Tommy Bolin, Private Eyes with Post Toasty. All right, guys, Big Speakers Corner reorder. Lots of, uh, lots of stuff on the web for pre-order. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Until next time.